Time for the KSL In-Depth. After the U.S. missile strike against Syria, we are reminded that some Americans have gone there to fight against the Assad regime. They're not U.S. soldiers. These are volunteers, and one of them is Freeman Stevenson. He's a journalist for KSL.com who volunteered for 10 months with the Kurds. He's seen this Syrian civil war firsthand And he's joining us now on the KSL Newsline. Thank you so much, Freeman. Many of us have probably heard a little bit about the humanitarian crisis, of course, the refugees from this war. But what does life look like for the average person in Syria right now? Uh, Well, that kind of depends on where you are in your average place in Syria. If you're on the coast and the very north of Syria, chances are life is fairly normal. These are places that are controlled enough. There is obviously risks of car bombs, uh, especially up north with the Kurds and their federated system. The Turks occasionally send artillery shells in. But life is fairly normal, if a little restricted on amenities. But then if you go to the front lines, cities like Raqqa is now being assaulted, Aleppo on last year. And these are pretty much full-blown war zones. There's airstrikes going on, there's artillery, there's car bombs. It's not nice. Freeman, is the fear of a chemical attack an everyday concern in Syria, or is this a one-off event we just saw this week? This is generally, I mean, chemical warfare has been used in the Middle East rather sporadically for a couple decades now. Obviously, the Iran-Iraq war had a very widespread use of it, and so it is known that these countries have stockpiles. But, I mean, it's not something you really live under the fear of because there's really no way to actually prepare for it. Like, when we would roll through, we took an ISIS city called Shadadi, and there were stockpiles of chemical weapons, gear, uh, gas masks, hazmat suits, and sarin gas testing kits. And so it's something that's present, but it's not really something I think you can worry about because there's really no way to prepare for it for your average people. Now, you were boots on the ground. You were boots on the ground fighting alongside the Kurds against ISIS. Did you ever run into Russian forces and ever have to fight against them? Uh, No. So the Russians back up the Assad regime, obviously, whereas the U.S. backs the YPG, which is a predominantly Kurdish but multi-ethnic militia in the north. Uh, No, I did. There were instances where we would fight the regime, but the Russians were never involved in that. And for the most part, the YPG and the Russians have fairly good relationships. And there's been really no interest in the Russians in trying to fight the YPG, and the YPG has no interest in fighting the Russians. So from your experience on the ground, will Assad get the message that was delivered by the U.S. warships last night? If it was, in fact, him who did use the chemical weapons. I do think there is, you do have taken the possibility that this might have been some sort of false flag attack by the, you have Al-Qaeda, you have various Islamic militias within the rebel territory these days. But if it was Assad, I would imagine that this probably was a pretty good reminder that he shouldn't do that anymore. Freeman Stevenson is a journalist for KSL.com who volunteered to fight for 10 months alongside the Kurds in Syria. Thanks so much for joining us. You've been listening to the KSL In-Depth at 15 and 45.